Ether Channel is now included in the CCNA certification exam and is part of the new CCNA curriculum. In this demonstration, I'm going to work with Ether Channel and configure it on my switches. I'm using Packet Tracer 6.2 for this demonstration. If you'd like to follow along, and you have Packet Tracer 6.2, then you can download this file that I'm working from from my website. You'll find the link to the web page in the description below the video. So, what is Ether Channel? Ether Channel is a technology that allows you to take multiple switch ports on your switch and bundle them together into one logical interface. The benefit is that you can get more bandwidth for your uplinks that go from switch to switch or from switch, let's say, to a server. So if I bundle, like in this example, on S1 here to S3, I've taken four links. I've got four fast Ethernet connections here on four switch ports, and I'm going to bundle them together into one logical interface. So I'll be getting quadruple my bandwidth. So instead of 100 megabits between S1 and S3, I'll get 400 megabits between the two switches. This can be really useful if your network is bottlenecking and you need more bandwidth, but you can't necessarily afford new switches or uh, uh, faster switches, then you could bundle links together and double your bandwidth, or in this case, quadruple it. Also, not only can you increase bandwidth between switches, you can even use ether channel between a switch and a server. So for instance, with this server right here, if I look at it, I've actually put a second network interface card into the server. So now I have two NICs. So if I could run ether channel on my NICs on this server, then I could have two connections to switch S3 and I could get double the bandwidth from my server, let's say, to my switch. So let's say just like that. So with two links acting as one, I could get double the bandwidth from the server to the network. Now your NICs, your Ethernet NICs, gigabit or fast Ethernet, whatever they are on your server, will need to be able to support Ether Channel for this to work. Now in Packet Tracer, I don't believe I can do this with the server, so it's just an example. But we can, in Packet Tracer, configure Ether Channel between the switches and bundle these links together into logical interfaces. Not only does Ether Channel improve throughput and bandwidth on your uplinks or to your servers, it also adds redundancy in that if a Ether Channel link, if a single link fails, for instance, if gigabit 0 slash 1 were to fail, we still have gigabit zero slash two, so the ether channel stays up. So that provides redundancy between your switches and from your switches to your servers. So you can bundle up to eight switch ports into an ether channel or port channel, and it's recommended to not have more than six separate ether channel bundles per switch. I'm also going to use this opportunity to explore some of the different ways that you can configure ether channel. So in this scenario, the way I've laid it out is that between switch 1, S1, and switch 2, S2, I'm using the two gigabit interfaces, and I want to bundle those together into one Ether channel interface. Now to do this, I'm going to use LACP, and LACP is the Link Aggregation Control Protocol. It's an open standard maintained by the IEEE at the original specification 802.3 AD, and I believe the new specification is 802.1 AX. So link aggregation control protocol uh, can be used on non-Cisco devices to, to do ether channel. So in this case, I'm going, I'm using Cisco devices, obviously this is Packet Tracer, but Cisco supports LACP, so we can configure this Ether channel link between S1 and S2 using LACP. Between S2 and S3, we'll use Port Aggregation Protocol, which is a Cisco proprietary protocol, and the acronym PAGP here. We'll use it with four fast Ethernet links going from S2 to S3. We'll bundle them together into one logical interface and get quadruple the bandwidth. Then lastly, between S1 and S3, 
you see that I have the four links. We're going to bundle them together into one link. And for this, we're going to just use Ether Channel, but we're going to do it with a manual configuration. So LACP and PAGP are protocols which will negotiate which switch ports can join the Ether Channel based on compatible configurations. If there's an incompatible configuration, the switch port won't be allowed to join the Ether Channel. Now, Ether Channel manual mode is a manual mode where there's no negotiations and the switch ports are automatically forced into the Ether Channel. And it's a little trickier because if you have a misconfiguration, it could cause the Ether Channel not to work or to fail. To test everything, we'll have PC2 and PC3 and PC0 and PC1. PC0 and PC2, you can see, are on VLAN 10. They have a 192.168.10.100 address and a 192.168.10.150 address. And so they should be able to communicate with each other on VLAN 10. And PC1 and PC3 well, should be able to communicate with each other on VLAN 20. And then we can play with our um, Ether channels to uh, observe the operation and test the scenario. So let's get started configuring it. I'll start with switch S1 and configure the connection between S1 and S2. So we'll start with that, the connection between S1 and S2. I'll open S1. Type enable conf t to get to global configuration mode and set the host name to S1. Now the first thing I need to do is configure the VLANs and the switch ports in the VLANs for the PCs. So I'll quickly create VLAN 10, VLAN 20. PC0 is connected to switch port 1, so I'll say interface F0 slash 1 and change it. Switch port mode access and then switch port access VLAN 10. And then PC1 is in VLAN 20. So I'll go into interface 10 and do an up arrow to do switch port mode access and then switch port access VLAN 20. So now port 1 is in VLAN 10, port 10 is in VLAN 20. I've got my two VLANs. And so the PCs are now connected to switch ports that are in the respective VLANs. Now we're going to set up our port channel, which is uh, LACP. We're going to do link aggregation control protocol on gigabit 01 and 02. And I'm going to do that first. So the gigabit connections going to S2. So for that, I'll say interface range gigabit 0 slash 1 dash 2 to go into the gigabit 1 and 2 interfaces. And then I'll type channel dash group 1 mode and then put a question mark. So you can see here I've chosen channel group. I've given it a number 1. And the modes that are available, you can see here that we have active, which will enable LACP unconditionally. We have the opposite of active, which would be passive, which will enable LACP only if another LACP device that it's connected to is an active state. So we can either have, if we want to do LACP, we can either make it active or passive. I'm going to use active and we're doing LACP so that's what I'm going to focus on right now. So I'll set this switch S1's gigabit interfaces to active and then on S2 I'll set them to passive. So that sounds good. Active. All right and you can see now that I get an output message to the console saying that the interfaces both went down and then both have now come up. Now all I need to do to get this ether channel connection uh, finished is to go to the other switch and configure it. Now let's take a look though first at our running configuration here. So I'll do control C, show run. 
we'll take a look at it. So you can see here in the running configuration that Gigabit 01, there's my channel group 1 mode active. Gigabit 02, channel group 1 mode active. And by doing that, you can see that it created interface port channel 1. So this is the logical interface, this port channel 1, the logical interface for both of my Gigabit Ethernet interfaces. So now if I want to turn this logical connection, this logical interface that goes from S1 to S2 and configure it as a trunk, I'll do my configurations from now on on the port channel. And that's what I'm going to do right now. So I'll say get back into global configuration mode, say interface port channel 1, and I'll turn it into a trunk. And then I'll, after that, I'll say switch port trunk allowed VLAN 10 comma 20. So now if once again I go back and look at my running configuration, show run, and we take a look at the configuration, you can see now that I've configured port channel 1, interface port channel 1, which is the logical grouping of gigabit 01 and 02 with the switch port mode trunk command and the switch port trunk allowed VLANs 10 and 20 and you can see that actually the commands transferred over to the individual gigabit ethernet interfaces. So the best way to configure this now is if you want to alter and change this this ether channel link or this port channel link the best way to do it is to put your configurations right on the port channel. Then the changes will be reflected on the individual interfaces. If you try to do it vice versa and configure the individual interfaces, it won't be reflected on the port channel and you'll probably run into uh, uh, problems in getting it to work. So I'm going to leave that there and now it's time to go to S2. So now I'll go to S2 and I'm going to do something very similar on S2. I'll go in. I'll set the host name. I'll create my VLANs. I'll set the VLANs on the respective interfaces. So now I've created both VLANs, VLAN 10, VLAN 20, switch port 1, put it in VLAN 10, switch port 10, put it in VLAN 20, and now I'm ready to configure my ether channel with LACP. So I'll say interface range gigabit 0 slash 1 dash 2 to get into both gigabit interfaces. I'll put in the command channel dash group one mode passive and you can see that the interfaces go down and then come back up now that that's done I can go directly into interface port dash channel one turn it into a trunk and then put the allowed VLANs. You can see that instead of typing out switch port I just type SW which is shortened and the the iOS will automatically complete the command for me. And You can see as soon as I've done that and I have the compatible configuration line protocol and interface port channel 1 change state to up. So there's a few important rules that you need to follow when working with Ether Channel. And one of the rules is you need a compatible configuration on opposite ends of the link. So a couple of the rules are if you're going to be using gigabit interfaces, you need to use both interfaces gigabit. I can't have one gigabit interface and one fast Ethernet interface. Also, similarly, I can't have 
differing configurations on opposite ends of the link. So I can't have a trunk on one side with VLAN 10 and 20 and the trunk on the other side with VLAN 30 and 40. That needs to be identical configurations on either side. Now, um, as far as the VLANs go and uh, the trunk or access port and those types of configurations. Now, for the, for the channel group, if I want to use LACP, the best way to do it is to choose one side to be the active and the other side to be the passive. And now they're communicating with each other. And if one of the links was to go down, LACP will manage this port channel and will keep, keep the link up. So for instance, if I was to lose one of these links, the ether channel would stay up even with only one connection. If one went bad, it would still stay up. That's because LACP is managing and maintaining the virtual interface and would be able to keep that up. So I'll put this back. Once again, you can't have a mixed switch ports here. They have to both be gigabit interfaces. Can't have a gigabit and a fast ethernet. Okay, so LACP is up. We'll take a look now. I'll do a show ether channel question mark here. Let's do a summary. And you can see port channel one protocol LACP, the ports gigabit 01 and 02. You can see that Let's see here, P and I, and then we can look at the legend here. P, port channel, I, standalone, um, SU, in use, S, layer two. So this is a layer two ether channel um, connection. You can do layer three ether channel, but to do that you need a multi-layer switch like a Cisco 3560 series switch where you could do multiple links and create an ether channel on a layer three interface if you had a layer three switch so you could have multiple connections but just one ip address on the link if you had that so anyway this is up it looks good let's see if we can ping across from pc0 to pc2 and you can see i'm getting a reply and it looks like it's working nicely all right, time to configure PAGP port channel 2 between S2 and S3.